Sorry guys for not uh, posting a video earlier about my progress here, but you know, I had to take my shirt off, it's so hot. And I knew if you saw my gorgeous body, you would just be totally jealous. So uh, it's the end of the day, I got my shirt back on and it uh, looks like a few good days of uh, weather. And so I'm building the platform for the tapered tower. Now this is, this is level. And uh, the end unit still hasn't got its taper. It won't be a parallel line because it's tapered. That line will actually be kicked out this way. I have a way of doing those sorts of things a little easier than math is never wrong, uh, guys. But uh, just the roof's not the best here, and I want that to be perfectly plumb. So I'm, uh, you know, I've got a way here. I'm doing it now. I'll show you some of the other components that are out. Um, and I'll probably finish that off tomorrow. As I said, I probably got a couple days of good weather, but I do have it tied together at least, uh, you know, um, the plates. Now, as you know, <laughs> back framing is always longer than the real framing. That's why they have back framing crews. So here's all the things that had to be considered. Uh, once again, I cut through the existing plates and ran my towers down to the plate. Uh, it was a compromise of redoing Nick's whole roof, and I think that's perfectly adequate. Problems I ran into the other day was, is the end of this, uh, you can see it's sort of hacked up a little bit with, uh, I actually had to tilt this back in. The ridge was half an inch too far this way, so uh, I did fix that. Um, and uh, we gotta run I got run run power down the wall into the electrical room that'll be down here. But we're pretty close. I've got a little short tail of my rafter for the gutter portion, and I've carried that. There'll be a little piece there. Now, the reason I had to frame it this way is because the tower actually has to sit on this roof. If I started at the base wall and did a tower, there'd be a big open gap there, which would be terrible to waterproof. So the taper uh, on this side, which is a plumb wall, will actually terminate on this sloping roof, which is indicated there. So there'll be, a, there'll be an inside rafter on the inside here that that taper will continue. The taper is a... Um, one and a half inches in 12 uh, uh, vertically. And uh, so uh, I'll make, I cut my plates with diagonals uh, with the degree and I'll make a plate when I'm done that, that I take into the shop and continue on. So that is about 55 inches above the roofscape right now. I drew it at eight. Uh, which would terminate it in the tower at about two feet for the vent. So we're at 55. It's the, the base of that tower is, uh, you know, the tapered portion. Then the grill. So there's another 12 feet. It's probably the tip of that thing's up here because it has an 18, 12 little, uh, cupola roof on the top. So I want to get that really dead nuts plum. Uh, anyway, what a horribly hot day, guys. Uh, made it through, supposed to break by Friday. And you're probably wondering why I don't have a floor deck. And that's because I'm not buying plywood, guys. We're going tongue and groove, uh, plank flooring, um, 16, 20 inch widths. Uh, so I want to get a roof on this before I put that type of stuff on. Anyway, thanks for following. Please comment. Let me know what you think. Maybe it's starting to make sense. Okay, so I'm in the shop today, and what we're doing is we're uh, getting a tapered stick. I don't know what the angle is, but what I do know is it's one and a half at 12. So I've come over, uh, and I know uh, my length is 55 inches, which means I have more than four feet. So I've come over here seven, which is four feet plus an inch. What I mean by that is inch and a half per foot equals six plus one is seven and I come over to four feet and I come in seven and that's my taper. Now I could use a chalk line I suppose 
we're gonna run it over the joiner anyway because it's gonna have a slight bevel. Now I know it's cheating. A full mill shop, you guys out in the field, gotta do it with hand tools. Well, skilled enough, but we're going for a little more perfection here. This is finished framing. So I've got my tapers. These are one and a half and 12. All right, so here we're cutting the uh, uh, the angle for it to set on the roof. Now, the roof is a 512 pitch, and the tower is a one and a half 12. That makes that angle 30. How you do that is the angle of that roof is 22.65. The angle of the 112 is 6. You add those two together. Now, at the top, we got to take them apart. So that's my seat cut. I've ran up, marked where it's supposed to terminate, which is right here. And so I need to remove that much off the cheek cut to be where I'm supposed to be. That'll establish my plate. And there she is. So I've got, as you can see, let's see if I can get it back further. There's my tapered side. Uh, now the important thing to note is that the top has to be square. Bottom won't be square, but the top will. And uh, so when I get that other one, so now I'll run from nothing to my taper. That's gonna establish, I'm gonna set that one uh, on the deck directly. Possibly, we'll see. And then I'll get my plate in here and then we'll use two befores to come up to the square plate. Oh, and that sun just poking through, burning off the, the morning light. Uh, this temperature isn't gonna hold much longer, so I wanna get off this roof. Okay, so now I got both my tapers. So now I can establish my line, and you can see that it's quite wider at the bottom. So we'll put a plate in there. Our top plate sits here, and uh, uh, each length is identical. Okay, so plates in. So basically the corners, instead of doing a hip cut, I did a false hip, kind of like you would do when you do a false gable on a roof, right? You lay it flat. And then I run my sticks vertical. So the only thing I didn't, uh, you know, calculate was the length of the plate at the top. I just left this plate at the square length and I left that one long and I'll just cut that off with the uh, fine tool. But I'm ready to uh, sheath that in. There's a bit of bracing underneath I have to do, but we're properly pitched all the way around sitting on the, on the roof. So we'll pitch this way, this way, and this way. And as I said, the remainder of that pitch has to go on that other roof and that's because had I started the pitch down there, it would open up a gap between the wall. You, you, can't, in, you can't do that. And I also want the bottom to wrap around the corner, so I have a terminating corner. So that's, in my opinion, the proper way to place certain objects. I've seen some horrible things. So the top is perfectly square, and you can see it's a little wider at the bottom. Maybe by about four inches. You know, you can see the, uh, how far over from the vertical plumb and how far over from this vertical plumb. So those are the two things I sort of cheated on in terms of, uh, you know, calculating what the opening is, but she, she's all clean. Still have to build a little cricket right there to divert the water. Not sure what the pitch will be there, but it's not that important when we're up high on the ridge. There is no supporting water off of this roof onto this roof, so we're only carrying water from the ridge, very little water. Uh, I'll I usually try to do the same pitch, uh, but I don't know if I have the room and I don't know if I want to see it. Oh, that's pretty crooked. Perfect! Like I knew what I was doing. All right, should have the uh, tower base buttoned up by tomorrow. Got the cricket in and I uh, shielded 
and uh, we just got it run down there. We'll get the, uh, you know, the blue skin on the inside corner of here. That'll be enough uh, to keep the uh, uh, shop dry for a little while. I'll, I'll do a better job later. We don't have rain till Friday. And so we're level, square, and, uh, you know, we don't got a gaping hole in Nick's, uh, <laughs> Nick's shop. And uh, there's a look down, down at the forges. You can see them. So this should really evacuate a lot of the heat created by the uh, propane forges and keep the temperature down in there and make it much more comfortable. So uh, still quite a bit of sun in the sky here. Uh, it was a great exercise to start at 6 in the morning. Uh, it's just after 5, so that's not too bad. Everything is sheathed, angled, uh, perfectly checks out, uh, just lickety smooth. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So uh, that's it for today. I think tomorrow I'll finish the plate pieces and start laying out the the beams that go across for the lantern uh, that is visual framing not covered so i have to be uh, careful i don't leave it in the sun some of this stuff is going yellow really quickly in the sun and so i don't really want to do that um, so i'll probably prepare quite a bit of stock in advance pre-assemble the, the trusses and whatnot so pretty cool I've got the tower base ready. I'll make a uh, square plate that fits on that exactly. So I can just cap that and then bring that square into the shop and continue the tower into the shop. So we're, oh, we're maybe, we're maybe the tip of the tower is up about that high. And the wind is beautiful today, so I'm imagining it's gonna work great. Anyway, thanks for following. Uh, any questions or comments, uh, you know I love and uh, thank you for following. Going to be beautifully secluded. Can't wait to be sitting on that balcony.